we know that complete remissions are much are important in mantle cell lymphoma. Partial remissions tend to not last very long. The one exception may be with chronic daily oral therapies like abrutinib, where partial remissions seem to have the ability to be durable. When you look at efficacy data for abrutinib, the uh, median progression-free survival is about 12 to 14 months. The median response duration is around 18 months. And with longer-term follow-up, it looks like about 20, 25% of patients will still be in remission at three years. So there is a significant minority of patients who can achieve very durable remissions with abrutinib therapy. So unfortunately, not the majority, and there's lots of effort underway to see what can be added to abrutinib therapy to make the remissions more durable, combining it with rituximab or other anti-CD20s, for example, combining it with other novel agents like venetoclax, which is an investigational BCL2 inhibitor, combining it with proteasome inhibitors. There's lots of clinical trials ongoing right now looking at combining abrutinib with other therapies to see if we can get remissions to last even longer. Um, and so I think that's where the future is for abrutinib. Abrutinib is like a home run drug in CLL. I mean, it works phenomenally well. It's not quite as efficacious in mantle cell. And the reality is more than half the patients will have broken through their abrutinib therapy after two years. And so we do need to find better ways to keep people in remission with mantle cell lymphoma in abrutinib in combination may turn out to be the, the answer. When I start patients on abrutinib therapy, I kind of warn them about the arthralgias, the myalgias. Sometimes we see muscle cramps. This can be quite problematic in the first few months. Occasionally, mouth sores. Um, like I said, most of the time I find those symptoms get better over the first few months if you just kind of hang in there. Sometimes you need to do mild to moderate dose reductions to get them through those toxicities. Um, usually though, once people settle in, um, it becomes pretty manageable. But if I have a patient who's having bad ongoing muscle cramping, bad ongoing arthralgias, bad ongoing bruising, which is the, another potential side effect of abrutinib, then we'll try dose reductions. So. 560 is four pills a day, so you can cut it down to three pills a day, which is 420, which is the CLL dose. Sometimes that's a little better tolerated than the 560 dose. So that's a perfectly reasonable thing to do if your patient is having some difficulty with, with the abrutinib side effects. Um, if I have a patient who gets atrial fibrillation on abrutinib, that can be a bit of a problem and it's not so much the atrial fibrillation because that's manageable, but patients who get AFib generally need to go on anticoagulation. And anticoagulation and abrutinib don't go that well together. Abrutinib seems to have some effect on platelets because of some off-target effects on other kinases besides BTK. And so the bruising and the bleeding can become quite problematic if you have a patient requiring anticoagulation and abrutinib. So in that instance, I might try to find other ways to manage the patient if they develop AFib, and I would stop the abrutinib and try, try to find another way to manage their, their mantle cell lymphoma. Outcomes in mantle cell lymphoma have improved dramatically over the past 15 years. The progress has been very gratifying to, to see. Having said that, there is still lots of room for improvement. We're doing better with frontline treatment uh, intensive therapies seem to be improving outcomes for younger patients. Treatments like bendamustine seem to be improving outcomes for older patients. The development of novel targeted therapies like bortezomib, lenalidomide, abrutinib appear to be improving outcomes in the relapse setting in mantle cell lymphoma. And uh, I think a big focus going forward are gonna be to try to figure out how to combine these things in the most logical and rational way to improve outcomes even further. For example, there's a big uh, international trial called the SHINE study, which is taking patients just like ours and uh, randomizing them to bendamustine rituximab or bendamustine rituximab plus abrutinib. And so 
Uh, we'll probably see data from this trial and similar trials in about 12 to 18 months time. And it'll be really interesting to see if adding novel targeted agents onto a immunochemotherapy backbone can improve outcomes even further. So that's really, those trials are completed, the data is maturing, we're just waiting for those results. But those studies have the potential to change the standard of care for uh, frontline management of mantle cell lymphoma. Mm -hmm.